Oh. Oh. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the TSE call. So the first, let's start with the legalese. So as you know, this is a public call. Everybody is welcome to join and contribute. However, there are two requirements to doing so. You must know and live by the antitrust policy, the notice of which is currently displayed, and the code of conduct that we all live by, and which is linked from the agenda. With that done, we can move on to the announcements. So, Rai, you want to do the honor of the newsletter reminder? Sure. Uh, the newsletter is uh, for the community, and it's a place for uh, projects to announce uh, goings on about the projects. Um, it goes out every Friday. We've got a couple hundred people that read it, so uh, please check it out. Uh, and then, uh, let's see, I already canceled the call next week. And Helen, did you want to do the hyperledger form? Or Brian? Uh, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Um, yes, uh, things are looking really cool for next week. Lots of stuff coming in, uh, late breaking uh, uh, in terms of keynote panels and things like that, uh, and 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 really good numbers on unregistered. So uh, really just uh, hoping if you haven't registered yet and you can make the time, please come. Uh, if uh, for any reason the registration price uh, is a challenge, let us know. There's there's plenty of discounts available. And uh, yeah, really just want to see everybody there. And thank you to everybody on the call who is presenting there because it's a key way for us to, to get the word out about what we're doing, um, uh, especially being able to put the videos up later and to use the content to drive all sorts of other interesting stuff for the rest of this year. So uh, hope to see many of you, many or even all of you there. All right, thank you. And so as uh, Rai pointed out, uh, so I did uh, want to cancel next week's uh, call. I mean, there will be the conference, obviously. So I think we can skip next week so that we can all focus on the conference, not let the call distract us. So we'll be meeting again on June 17th instead. Okay, so go. Is there any other announcements anybody else wants to make? Nobody raises their hand, so we'll move on. So we have two quarterly reports. Yes, I still because as you may have seen, Silas uh, did come around and uh, published the report for Borough, and um, he. Um, he announced it to the list actually, which was nice. So, uh, is there any questions? So, I assume you, I mean, looking at the, the number of people who tick the boxes, it seemed like the, the people had the time to review the reports. There was a from the Cello team, they did a call out to get help for front end developers. So if you know of anybody is looking for a cool project to work on, um, who was uh, interested in front end development, you could uh, you know point them towards the Cello project. Otherwise, there was no issue raised. The borough project obviously seemed to have uh, hit some important milestone, and you know you may have seen that uh, Silas was. Uh, highlighting some of the achievements they've uh, made and uh, wanted to highlight that, but he, otherwise there was no real call for action for the TSC. So unless anybody has any questions about any of those, I think we can call those done. I don't see any hands raising. I was just going to say, I'm sure Silas is always looking for help, too. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good point, Mark. <laughs> I guess that's kind of true across the board anyway, but... Uh, yeah. yeah, as ever. Hi, Silas here. Um, yes, oh, there I, you I, are. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, yeah, no, I'm, I'm lurking. Um, hello, Welcome. everyone. Um, thanks. Um, yeah, I think I, I kind of made one 
re remark there about how the the new cogen feature is not terribly well documented um it's that sometimes slipping down to the bottom of the stack um and I worry a little bit about it, its discoverability. So there's definitely some some fairly straightforward documentation that could happen there if anyone wants to, uh, to chime in. I also just had a look on the insights link and I'd like to um, uh, uh, admit, I may have double counted some of the contributors. So I've got some from the end of March. Um, so uh, I think there's at least, there's probably two contribu contributions there that were actually end of March anyway. So uh, may I culpa on that? But otherwise it has been a, a, a good, um, quarter for reasons I don't fully understand, but I'll I'll take that. All right, well that's great. Sounds good. Thank you, uh, Bobby. Uh, yes, I would like to uh, extend the learning materials working group to help you out, Silas. So send me an email or just reach out, and we'll get started. Well, there you go. How about that? You Thanks. Uh, I saw a hand flashing, but I didn't see who that was, and it's gone. So I guess we're done. Let's go. All right, let's move on to the rest of the agenda then. So of course, first and foremost, we should continue the discussion on the Firefly proposal. There's been a lot of traffic on the GitHub, uh, I mean, first on the Google Doc, in the mailing list, uh, and the GitHub uh, repo now, I mean, there was a, so I think we should try to assess where we are. There seems to be quite a bit of discussion also outside of the main channels. People have been talking privately and trying to figure out what's going on. So let's try to put everything on the table and see where we stand so that maybe we can figure out the way forward. So I will, uh, give a chance to the Collido team first to give an update. I saw Steve sent an email, uh, I think it was yesterday. I have to admit not to be sure of the timing anymore because there is still email flying around. So whether it's yesterday or today, it seems to be a bit irrelevant, but uh, do we have Steve on? Yes, I'm here. Yes, please. Uh, so, so maybe a good place to start is is that email with just a, a quick recap of the Delta for folks like you're saying, Arno, just to trying to stay up to speed on on all, all that's happening. So maybe I'll just step through that really quickly here. Um, it should only take a minute, and, and then you know potentially we could turn it over to the you know maybe the meteor discussion today around the the um, fabric smart client yeah. uh, project. Okay, so so what's changed since last week is, um, you know, there's feedback there to move the, the hip into GitHub that happened. Um, as you noted, uh, there were a number of comments that um, continued the engagement around the comments. Uh, and so you can check those out. The, the, um, the, the link, it looks like you pulled in the link to that. For, for folks to see some of the ongoing dialogue. Um, yes. Good, there was a lot of good comments from Angelo and Dave. Um, and some of those resulted in uh, two, I'll categorize them in a couple different buckets. One was cleaning up some of the language in, in the proposal um, to just be more concise and more clear and, and not to overreach on the marketing type of claims. Um, so, so I went went through the, the document and, and um, pulled that out in, in several places and expanded on um, some some other areas as, as well. Uh, Jim and was, was also active in in some of the more discussion. That was kind of the other bucket of, of questions there, more of a more of discussion uh, type format and I think some of that has uh, evolved into the larger discussion around uh, the fabric smart client um, uh, topic uh, but just to round out the other uh, more tactical updates the, the, the other thing the two other areas I'd like to call out that have changed on the document since last week is is the sponsors there are several new sponsors um, you know I'll, I'll mention a couple specifically here Eugene 
uh, from the Avalon project. We've had discussions with him about, um, you know, how uh, how Firefly, you know, could could evolve to to plug in uh, Avalon and and to to leverage some of the good things that that project has. Um, as a result of some of those conversations, he he signed on, and then Arun also. Um, it wasn't actually in my email last night, but as of this morning, uh, sponsored. Uh, give if, if he does want to speak up, you know, I'll give him a chance to. But we really appreciate that endorsement um, as well. Uh, just a, a quick note for on Arun's behalf. Uh, he, he signed as an individual, uh, you know, not having his corporate mission as as many people did, and Gary and, and others on on the list there. Um, and so we, we we respect that and and any, any sort of official communications going forward we want to respect that as well um and then finally there was discussion last time around contributors um there there is a, a third contributing company consensus health that has signed on to to commit resources to the project i know there may have been a, a little confusion uh, before some of it self-inflicted uh, with, you know, um, with how we wrote up Atatos. Um, uh, they were the second party in addition to Clyda who had committed resources. And so uh, we've clarified, you know, how, how they fit in, into the project as well. So if you, that's worth uh, everyone please to, to take a, a look at. Um, the last item on on moving from the hip itself, there was a, a, a larger a question around, I think maybe from Grace or around like a community building plan. We did have um, disc fall on discussions uh, with with David B and, and with Rye, um, who have been really helpful pulling in sort, sort of some of that uh, tribal knowledge that we were talking about uh, before sort of here's what's written down, here's where there's a strong re recommendation, a soft recommendation. And so out of, out of that work, we've, we've begun a plan for, for how, um, you know, community, what calling community building plan uh, for, for some of the important topics, like how frequently there will be uh, calls and how we intend to run those. And, um, you know, you guys know as well as anyone. So those are sort of the, the, the quick primer to, to try to get everyone on to the same page. Uh, are there any questions or, or comments on, on those areas uh, before we move on to the the uh, note from Dave and your I don't see any hand being raised, so I assume not. So yes, yeah. so thank you, Steve, for doing this. So I hope that clarifies where things stand from your point of view. And so, yes, indeed. Uh, so there was an email sent by Dave Ainert to the mailing list. And I'm going to turn to him to give him a chance to explain what this is about so that those who may not have seen the email or want to have a rehash can get that. Okay, uh, yeah, this is Dave Ainert, I can do that. So uh, hopefully most of you have, have read the email that has a lot of the core content, but I want to highlight a few things here. Um, so there's been a lot of excitement about a new project in the multi-party system space, and I think for good reason. Um, but I think the desire to announce something quickly has overshadowed some of the due diligence that we'd like to, to pursue. Um, the, the proposal was actually pretty rushed from the start. Even in the first discussion, there was an artificial deadline given for a vote uh, I'm not going to say no to Firefly if we come if it comes to a vote, um, but I am saying let's slow down a little bit and consider a few aspects that may contribute to the project's long-term success. So I've got um, four, four main points here, so bear with me. Uh, first, let's look under the covers at what is actually in the Firefly and the smart client contributions, and let's consider how they complement each other and the possibilities for convergence. For example, Firefly focuses on messaging, eventing, and connectivity, while Smart Client focuses on cross-organization business processes, agreements, and private views of the business processes and data. 
these aspects of the smart client are actually DLT agnostic. There's a different uh, layer for the views versus the fabric connectivity. And I think multi-party systems for off-chain exchange will need all of these capabilities. Uh, therefore, there's an opportunity to take the best ideas from both sides while the projects are still young and malleable. Uh, second, uh, Steve had proposed the project be an umbrella for various technologies. That's actually what got us thinking about coexistence and convergence with the smart client. I think we need to understand how an umbrella project would work, uh, especially when all the maintainers would be coming from Kaleido. I know there's other sponsors, um, but I think all the maintainers would be from Kaleido. Uh, if we don't consider what the umbrella project would look like, we probably would end up with a Frankenstein project or something that serves the needs of one organization. Uh, third, um, the single organization concern was raised last week, and it seemed like those concerns were brushed aside with the idea that we'd go find some other names to put on the project as sponsors and contributors. Um, but I think there's actually an opportunity for a true uh, collaboration on a, a true cross organization project here with maintainers from multiple organizations. So I think we should slow down and explore that rather than settling on a single organization driven project. And then fourth, one of the reasons given for the full project status versus continuing as a lab has been the maturity of the contributions and the number of developers. Uh, so I took a look at the Firefly commits and what I saw was that you know, last fall, there was a TypeScript implementation written by uh, Gabriel, and that's being replaced by a, a Go implementation written by Peter in the last month. I didn't really see evidence of, you know, fixed releases or anything like that that would suggest a level of production support and maturity. Uh, I'm not saying it's not there, but I think we'd want to, to understand uh, the Clio team's view on that. So ultimately, I think until those aspects are sorted out, I think it's premature to have a vote on the proposal. I'd like to take our time and consider convergence and a true cross organization project while the projects incubate in labs. I really don't see any downsides with taking a more deliberative approach like that. Um, I therefore like to make a motion to table the proposal until we can really fully consider those different aspects. Okay, all right. So thank you, Dave. Gary has his hand up. So I think, um, so on a few things, so I think, you know, I mean, obviously Dave has some good analysis in there on, on, on a couple of parts on, you know, I think some good points on, you know, fast tracking, et cetera. But um, I do question the, um, look, I guess everybody knows this by now, right? But I don't work for IBM anymore. So, um, <laughs> but I, I, I was there, right? when, you know, Fabric Smart Client or whatever, you know, was sort of coming out. So, so two things on that. One, like it is kind of Fabric specific right now. I'm not saying it couldn't change, but it is Fabric specific. And I think Dave, you know, I mean, to be honest, let's be honest, like if, if, we, if, if somebody had asked me to bring it, somebody could have overridden us, but I don't think that it was ready to be, you know, put out as a project under, you know, the Fabric, you know, I think it would have gone under the Fabric umbrella, just given the fact that it goes on with Fabric, it's called Fabric Smart Client. Uh, so I think, you know, labs would seem like a suitable place for it, right? Given. Yeah, I agree. I think that makes sense. It's just, I think the same thing applies to both projects. Yeah. 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 So I, I think, um, um, I think, uh, yeah, I, I guess, I, I don't know if, you know, Firefly would ever need to go as a lab project, right? I don't think that that's necessarily, you know where it goes. I, I, I get your point on the other parts, right? I don't think that it's, I, I don't think that there's a necessarily a thing that, that says you go from lab to incubator, right? I guess if you're saying that if they want to have it under Hyperledger, you'd prefer a lab, you know, versus an incubator, but. Um, you, no, you know. actually what I said is I'd prefer us consider the convergence before yeah, making but, it a project. Right. But, but I guess I'd say this, I don't understand how they can converge. Firefly and smart client are actually two different things. Well, like I said, uh, this, Firefly has the good messaging and event layers, whereas a smart client has this whole view layer with the business process flows across organizations. That's actually separate from the fabric connectivity. So that's the piece I'm thinking could come in. Sure, but I, I guess, yeah, I mean, I, look, I'm, I'm gonna let others talk, right? But I, I guess if that's like, you know, a way that people wanna contribute, I, I guess I would say this, I don't know why that would have to happen before something else could happen, right? I, I, I mean, you know, if there was bad behavior 
and you know people didn't you know accept pull requests that 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 showed how to leverage that functionality and extend things then i think that would be you know you know a problem right um but i think it'll be easier to sort out beforehand because otherwise you're dealing with um a project that only has Kaleido maintainers and who knows what would happen in that scenario. Well, I mean, I mean, most certainly, you know, look, if that's an exception that's out there, most certainly people can add somebody else as a maintainer, right. As a prerequisite in that. I mean, I think I'm actually a maintainer on transact and a few other things. Right. And I wasn't in the original side of it. Right. I think it was just, I was looking at it. Right. And when transact came in as an example, we thought we might be able to, you know, leverage it with fabric. I'm not bashing transact here. It just turned out, as you know, you were part of that analysis. We didn't go forward with that. Right. So if there's a request to have somebody else as a maintainer, who's willing to be a maintainer, that's yeah, actually that, a I, request. See, so it's I think like, that's, anyway, I'll stop. Sorry. Or no, I know. Yeah, no, I, I saw Jim has raised his hand, so I don't want to give him a chance to speak up too. So it, it, was that your main point, Gary? You're done. Yeah, I'm, uh, I will. Uh, let, uh, yeah, I'm done. Yeah, I don't know what my main point was. I had several in there, but I'm done anyway. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jim. Your turn. Yeah. Thanks, Arnold. Uh, I definitely agree that th there's a lot of uh, interesting uh, design ideas. Uh, I actually pointed out the the uh, the view idea of capturing member specific logic uh, as a construct, which is interesting. Uh, and apparently that is the, the main um, uh, generic piece that's in uh, the, uh, the Fabric Smart Client, uh, which uh, as Angelo pointed out, is developed so that uh, Fabric can be much easier uh, to get adopted. Uh, I think growing from that to become a multi-protocol uh, focused on not blockchain first, but multi-party system first of uh, de design philosophy may actually take quite some time uh, to evolve. Uh, whereas Firefly is a completely different thing. It's multi-party first. It's, it's designed from get-go to solve multi-party systems and blockchain is one piece in the puzzle. It's not a blockchain first idea. Uh, so to sort of bundle the two together and say we need to evolve together is, is, is somewhat um, um, arbitrary. And I don't agree that that is the right path to take. Those are very different things. On the other hand, uh, I do agree with the concern that, well, will this project be dominated with Clido? Um, we, we definitely want to do anything we want uh, to avoid the conception that this will be a Clido dominated project. I think that's a recipe for disaster. And we've seen that happening with other uh, projects. So please help us um, uh, avoid that. Uh, and if the IBM team is, is uh, truly passionate about this space, we would love to welcome their contribution. And, and I think so far we've demonstrated our willingness to work with everybody um, based on our discussions, based on our um, you know, willingness to reach out to everybody and have all the discussions. So I, I don't know what else we can do to, to demonstrate that, you know, we're not here to, to dem demonstrate a, a, a project. Okay, thanks you. thank you, Jim. But I mean, let me ask you one thing though, is that, well, I mean, I see you guys, and with, along with Angelo, you've been, you know, trying to respond to one another quite a bit, asking questions, answering back and forth. And it seems like there is, you know, there is something to be gained from everybody to to have that discussion going on. And and you know, other than the obvious desire, I understand of the Collider team to to be done with this proposal, get it accepted. What's the downside of Dave's proposal to, to take a bit more time to work out and better understand where there is a connection if there isn't, if there is one and, and possible convergence? Jean? Um, I, I just don't, I think uh, even Dave uh, totally recognized that the need for a project uh, like a multi-party system. Uh, so, so far, Farfly is exactly what the community wants. 
and uh, they came in from a pretty different angle and we we appreciate that uh, especially with their expertise on on fabric which is still uh, the you know the more uh, dominant uh, protocols in terms of usage, uh, so we'd love to love to work with them uh, on on uh, making this a su success. But I, I would encourage everyone to to evaluate uh, Firefly on its own merit and recognize that um, smart client as it is today is just a very different thing. Um, so in terms of understanding what Firefly does, uh, I hope everybody through, you know, the, the past four weeks of discussions and both on this call and offline have got a good enough, uh, understanding. Um, I know Angelo has some questions and which I clarified this morning. Uh, I don't know that if majority of the TSC still felt or it's still premature, which based on, on my observation is not the case. Um, I don't know if, if, if Steve or, or Sophia or Peter wants to chime in. No, no, but it's okay. We, we, we can, thank you. That's good enough. And I saw Gary raised his hand. Hopefully we can get an assessment of where this is the, the TSC can stand before the end of this call one way or another anyway. So I, I don't know where, you know, personally, I don't know where people stand. So I wouldn't claim to know. Let's, let's get to Gary. Yeah, just just two, just two sort of quick things, right? So, uh, look, I, I think um, you, you know, I, I I see on you know one side, I you know I do it is a little bit you know I will say it's a little bit odd in terms of you know that we were setting a timing or whatever, but on the on the other side of it, right? Um, I, I, I like like Arno, you know, I'll you know I, I don't necessarily like to see things like lag forever, right? So if they're you know, if there's, you know, real things that we want to get the decision. So Dave has a clear perspective, which is great. Right. And, 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 uh, I think that's awesome. Right. He's, he's asserted a point of view and, you know, at least we know where, where he stands. I think, you know, it would be good to find out where others stand and what their sort of concerns are outside of process type concerns. Right. There are a few objective things that have to be done. And I think those are being sort of handled right before it can be in there. And then as we've discussed, some things are subjective. Um, and, and and I guess I'll just sort of mention you know a couple of things right uh, a couple other things additionally right I think y y you know to a degree right we've decided whether it was explicitly implicitly or just by whatever right that you know there can be things that do the same thing I don't think the Firefly and, and Smart Client do do the same thing um, of course yeah proper stuff could figure out how to exploit both both capabilities together. I, I, I like the two layers together. Doesn't mean that we have to make them all come together at first. And again, I'll just go back to, we didn't do that with transact, right? Um, you know, it was, hey, you know, we may have it work with Fabric, right? And we sponsored it and had this stuff in there, but we didn't say, hey, you have to prove that it does, right? Or let's, let's, let's vet out that this is gonna be the case when it comes in, right? It turned out after the fact, right? That we vetted the case, we did our diligence and it just didn't, didn't work out, right? So. I guess we've had examples, right, of kind of projects kind of, you know, coming forward like that, right, with potential, you know, integration or convergence, you know, on the table. Um, but those explorations happened after a project came in, per se. So that's it for me. Goodbye. Great. Thank you, Gary. Jim, you still have your hand up. You wanted to add something? Uh, sorry, just forgot to lower it. Okay. No, cool. That's, I just want to check. All right. So... Anyone else? I don't see any other hand up. So we actually got a motion for from uh, Dave to table this off. Is that something we should consider, Angelo? Yeah, Dave, maybe I, I can say a few words, uh, given uh, also what the other uh, have said, uh, not in defense of uh, the, smart, the smart fabric smart client, because that's uh, not, uh, it would be unfair to do. Uh, to do that, but I want to uh, to point out the fact that uh, Gary agreed with Dave that both proposals are uh, an early stages. So that's uh, and he, he didn't deny that. Uh, so I want to stress this. Uh, I want to stress this point. And also, I want to say that uh, at the at the end of the day, from my point of view, here we are at the TSC, which is called Technical Selling Committee for Enterprise Blockchains. So I ask all the members of the TSC to evaluate any proposal from this point of view, from the technical point of view, 
with the regards of the enterprise blockchains. I, I put many comments on the on the proposal there, um, especially one that shocks me is that uh, at the end of the day, Firefly is using blockchain as a time stamping service, which is like saying, okay, let's use the, uh, the New York Times to post the hashes. What else more? It's undeniable that the, uh, Jim, you, so you also commented that there are pieces of the design that are not complete. So we don't even know if uh, there will be this possibility. So there will this dream that your Firefly is putting on the table that I find beautiful, but we don't know if the, this will be uh, be realized. So, I mean, just uh, just to put uh, something, just to square a few a few things. Thanks a lot. All right, thank you, Angelo. So I see more hands up now. Hot. Hey, yeah. Um, so I guess. I just have a couple of questions, and these are mostly uh, sort of for the TSC. I mean, some of this is, you know, how do we envision projects working, right? In the past, we've sort of had, um, you know, we've had certainly different projects that attempt to solve either the same or the similar problem, right? I mean, we have sort of three core DLTs that, you know, have a lot of overlapping functionalities. Um, so, you know, maybe there's room for multiple projects in this space, right? Um, I guess as a TSC, we should clarify, you know, sort of, uh, so, sort of our philosophy on this. Um, I, I hope that makes sense. All right. Thank you hard for bringing this up. I, it touches actually something that's dear to me that, you know, I've been modeling over over the last couple of weeks now uh, is, you know, when I first heard about the Collido project, I thought, oh, this is interesting. This is raising the, the level, you know, at which we are focusing above the level we have been living in, in Hyperledger with all the different frameworks and related tools. And, uh, I thought, okay, and they, they want to be multi-protocol, which is an opportunity to have finally a point of convergence, which you know we don't have in currently, and we have all these different frameworks, which you know at the end of the day, a lot of them are competing with one another, no matter how we spin it. Um, and, and we keep lamenting about the lack of collaborations between different projects. And it doesn't matter how much we wish it were different, it's not. And I have to say, I'm a bit saddened by the turn of event that I'm seeing now where we, 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 would, we already have two projects now that are playing in the same kind of space. And we are saying, well, it doesn't matter. We're not going to take the time to see if there is a way to converge because you know, and I'm not completely sure what the rush is. I mean, I understand the conference, but I don't honestly don't think the conference should be playing a factor in how the TSC makes decision. And uh, I feel very strongly about that. You know, if the conference wasn't there, would we still trying to be making a decision so quickly or should we, or would we actually take the time to have better discussions? And so I, you know, I hate to see the possibility that we are, foregoing right off the bat, the possibility of having convergence in that new space where I think the industry would definitely benefit from having a common solution rather than yet another layer at which we have competing projects. So I'll shut up on this and go to the queue. Jim. Uh, yeah, um, thanks hard for, for offering that aspect. Uh, may need more discussions on that, but I want to respond to Angelo's uh, comment. Uh, I guess uh, two things. One is uh, I clarify the exact features that uh, Firefly has abstracted blockchains to be. To be. And it's a list of four. Uh, time stamping is not even on the list because you don't need uh, data immutability assurance uh, with blockchain. You can achieve that with just multiple uh, multi signatures. Uh, but it, it is an intrinsic property we would inherit for using blockchain for sure. So time stamping is definitely not uh, one of those that is key to the Firefly's abstraction for blockchain. So uh, the, the four uh, features specific, and by the way, this, is, this was in the email I sent earlier, uh, is global ordering, um, atomic uh, broadcast, um, 
the uh, guarantee of double spend protection slash global unique uniqueness and event publishing. Um, so just want to be specific that uh, the, the the philosophy of Firefly is we're looking at all blockchains as equal because that's our experience with customers. We've we've rarely seen a project that mandates a particular blockchain because they have specific requirements that only one blockchain fulfills. Majority of the projects, it doesn't really matter which which one you, you pick. It's mostly a, a skills call. Which are you more comfortable with? Which, which do you understand better? Um, so th that's one aspect. Uh, the other is um, in terms of maturity of the project, it is true that all of our generation two code is coming out, out of the yeah, uh, Kaleido team uh, in the past two months. But uh, um, I, I clarified this in my email from last night. Uh, the current version, which is in production with multiple uh, large consortiums, uh, Clido customers, uh, has been in development for uh, almost a year. And if you count the critical, critical piece of ETH Connect, uh, it's three years. So um, I just don't uh, want the, um, uh, the TSC to get the impression that it's premature technology. All right, thank you, Jim. Steve. It's just a quick one back on uh, the maintainers topic. Um, you know, we, we just just for the record, we'd be really thrilled uh, to, to to take on uh, other maintainers, and and maybe it makes sense uh, specifically with the, the Fabric Smart Contract project. If someone like Dave would be willing to, we we'd be enthusiastic about that. No, but the, honestly, this this is this is uh, not a real issue to me. I mean. As you know, as it was hinted on, most projects are you know heavily uh, how do I say that uh, you know uh, managed by a single company. That's just the reality we're in. So you wouldn't be much different from everybody else in this regard. I think there's a bit of a difference in fact that you were not even open source before you came here with that proposal, and so. But you know that's you've got to stop at some point, I suppose. So let's not drill on that. I don't think it's relevant. But thanks for the offer. I mean, you know, uh, typically projects have some kind of policy on how you become a maintainer, and it was just you know all people volunteer right off the bat. So I I don't think it's actually proper to do it that way either. And even though it may have been done, like we heard from Gary, okay. uh, Brian. Uh, and so just to clarify on that that point, I've got a few others, but um, I, Arno, you don't think it's it, it's a bad thing if their initial roster is uh, of maintainers is mostly or entirely Kaleido employees. That's not a, a, mark, a mark against their proposal as a as a as a as a full project. Well, that's the way it is. I mean, they we're not even open source. I don't know how it could be different. This is a proprietary software that just. <laughs> Well, they actually did. There's, there's somebody from Akato who uh, has, uh, was part, has been part of the proposal. I don't think they itemized their maintainers list, but, um, but they've been working with their customers on this stuff before. And they, you know, so, so let me do a little bit of a, of a mea culpa on this too. Uh, partly related to, obviously, we talked with them before they, they published their proposal, um, and I, I, there was never really, there was never a deadline, right? I, uh, what um, when we talked with them. You know, we said, "Hey, there is Hyperledger Global Forum coming up." I, I you know, in terms of timing of, of getting the word out about uh, uh, maybe maybe submitting a, a proposal to the TSC, it would be nice. And this was us telling them that to do this by Hyperledger Global Forum so that we could use that as a place to talk about the project and start the community building process. And so now I'm worried <laughs> inadvertently uh, I, I, in, in, in what was intended to be, this is a way to, to really get, get some awareness of this uh, that turned into a perception that there was some sort of gambit that they would uh, walk away from the proposal if it wasn't accepted by by Global Forum or something like that, which has never been the case uh, from my understanding uh, and, and, and was never the impression I got. So um, I think I, I, I just want to do a mea culpa on that. And then secondly, um, on the convergence front, you know, happening in a parallel thread to all this has been this really healthy set of conversations between the Cactus 
team. Uh, and remember, Cactus is still very young. It's it's deployed in production in a couple places uh, or or pilots at least, but um, uh, it's still you know pretty young from a from compared to Fabric and and even Bezu and those sorts of things. Uh, and this new lab came in called Weaver, um, uh, which uh, you know does a lot of the same things. Um, and because it's a lab, we didn't say anything was uh, wrong with that or or have these kind of same kinds of issues. But they were going very much on their own path, and they did present here at the TSC, which was really good. And then the third. Uh, uh, kind of group uh, surfaced with uh, another approach uh, to interoperability with block between blockchains, um, a company called Data Chain in Japan, and their lab has now come in something called Yui. Um, and what when I saw this happening, I said, why don't we get together and talk about how these three efforts, you, even though one's a project and one's a lab and, and one's not even inbound yet, might work together and converge or at least usefully differentiate out there. And that spawned this really nice conversation happening in the architecture working group and a, a comparison document. Uh, and thank you to Hart and, and others who've been help, helpful in facilitating that conversation. My point is that convergence kind of thing. Um, it's very natural that we start from different points, even when we're solving the same problem. It's very natural that we have different uh, ideas and <laughs> unsadly different programming languages that we use to implement things that also can become a barrier to this kind of convergence. Um, but there's nothing magic about that convergence conversation happening as labs before they become projects or after or any anything like that. I don't know that there's you know pressure um, on a lab to do this before becoming a project, nor is there once it's a project any you know uh, lessening of the interest in convergence uh, if there's some benefit from that. So uh, I would try to um, tease that apart from whether um, uh, the, the question of whether a proposal should be accepted as a project. All right, thank you, Brian. But it's interesting you talk about cactus because cactus did start as a lab because they are two different companies with two different ideas and they went to a lab to work it out to come up with the common plan and that's only when they came to the TSC to start the project. But those were so, also code bases that weren't in production anywhere uh, and and this was no, again, no, the when we talked with them earlier we said you know one of the things that the TSC looks for is is this code how mature is the code has it been running in lots of places you, you know at least that was my impression one of the things that mattered to the TSC when it comes to evaluating whether there's something uh, is, is you know, that would mark in its favor. Obviously, we've approved things as projects that aren't in production, um, uh, things like Cactus or, or, or Transact, but but that would be a vote in its favor. And it, it, it there is a very big difference between um, where, where Firefly is now. In terms uh, I'll, I'll say again, I did not see any release history with Firefly, either V1 or V2. And maybe it's just not there. It's not, the not as an open source project. True. Exactly. So we don't know, Brian. I mean, that's the point. You can't just, you know, so let's we see. Have I to mean, take we have other it. people on the queue, please. Let's go to the queue. And there are many people who haven't expressed themselves at all that I'd like to hear from. So please speak up. I see on the TSC channel, some people are chatting. Uh, I encourage you to speak up and we're quickly running out of time. So uh, let's get to, to it. Gary. Isn't it? Yeah, so I was just going to go on your same point, right? I mean, it seems like we can circle around this, right? I mean, Dave put a motion out there, right? Um, you know, people could vote and say, like, the TSC could decide that we wanted to see, like, integration beforehand. I don't know, but I don't know that that, but nobody's saying anything, right? So I don't know that that's the case, right? Um, I, I'll just leave it at, I don't think it makes sense. I don't think they're the same project. I don't think they're the same thing. And, and this is, I would have said this, you know, either way, right? I, I don't, I, so I don't get that. But Again, right, that's one pe person saying, I'm one person saying it, you know, the project Jim and team is saying it, and Dave has, Dave and, and Angelo and right. you know, have his perspective. So we have a motion from Dave, which was to, yes. you know, put this on hold. Then there's a secondary thing that we're taught, having a discussion amongst like six of us, which is about, sorry, I don't log into Rocket Chat. I can't stand Rocket Chat, so I'm not on it, but. Um, okay, well, that's where uh, we do. But, uh, but, um, uh, right. Anyway, so to your point, right. And then, you know, there was, you know, Dave was proposing that, you know, we, we you know, saying, hey, we should, you know, hit one of his things in there was we should see if we can reconcile the projects. So maybe that's a combined emotion, right? So, okay, let's, let's get it. It's fine, Gary, let's leave it at this for now. I think you made your point. I'd like to try and get us moving before we ran out of time. So, <laughs> Jim, what do you have to add? Uh, sorry, I was distracted by the TSC chats. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, if there are there are questions about the release history of the uh, closed source ba uh, uh, code base, we can show that. In fact, I was 
actually uh, including a snapshot of the uh, contributors and the history of the old uh, private uh, repo, but it just messed up the format of the email, so I deleted it. But if people are interested, we can invite you to the to the code repository, do an inspection, and let us know, right? Um, what what's missing there? I'm sorry, what is the question? I, I was addressing the question from David that we don't know what the release history is. Ah. And we can, we also have um, on the sponsor list, a Dr. Uh, Schmidt. Uh, he is one of our customers using uh, using this technology. Uh, uh, guys, honestly, I don't think we need to go down to this work. level of details. They, these kind of things are, everybody is throwing everything into the kitchen sink now. Let's not get buried into all these details. Every project has some oddities and some unknown and whatever. I don't think it helps the discussion to focus on those things. Sorry. Angelo. Oh, very, very, very small thing. Uh, just to say that if you say ordering, you are saying time stamping. If you say that you don't need immutability, that you don't need a blockchain, so therefore, what are you talking about? And uh, I want to stress again that Gary didn't deny that the two proposals are uh, um, just a starting, starting thing. Thank you. All right. Then, I will, um, oh, sorry, I have to speak oh, out of turn. Yes, get in line, buddy. <laughs> well, Dave had motioned to table it, and I would second the motion to table it for a minimum of two months. All right. Well, you cannot amend the motion per se, but I, I second it, it, and my intent is that it would be for two months. So I'll second it without amending it. Okay. All right. So I guess we will call for a vote then. At least this will give us some clarification as to where people stand. So there's a motion to table this off by at least two months or two months exactly. I don't know. It, it's like, Basically, it's like, do you want to give ourselves a bit more time to figure things out? What is the right way forward? If you're confused, that gives you an option to get things clarified. And so, can I clarify my motion? Okay. So, I, I said a lot of things up front. I think my main point is how do we get some? I mean, if people are right that these projects are different, but they do have complementary features, I think. And so my main point that I would like to put on the, the motion for tabling is how do we get the, the concept of uh, business processes and views, uh, organization specific views, uh, converged into Firefly? Uh, and that's why I would like to table it. So I'd like to table it until we have a comeback on how we could bring that type of concept into Firefly. So what you're saying okay. is you modify the project proposal to include things that they didn't. What was that? Sorry, I didn't get it. Yeah. I think I, 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 reason for I, table. <laughs> I would be okay with um, either a, a comeback on how we can include this concept of business cross organization business processes and views into Firefly, or how we can make Firefly a true umbrella project where these different things can work together. Um, I think either of those, you know, I'd be satisfied with either of those. And that's why I would like to, to table it so that we can have a comeback on that, on that issue. I'm only seconding a vanilla table. So if it, someone wants to, to second the modification, go for it. I see that uh, there's some robust discussion in chat. Uh, yeah, so we need a clear motion that has been seconded so we can have a vote. Otherwise, we are stuck, guys. And yeah. we have nine minutes left. Do we have two people who agree that they wanted to table it or not? I can't I tell. I think we should well, table we it. We already had two of that. So we can just leave it at this for now. But, you know, it's a bit, I agree with the sentiment that it's nicer to have a goal set. Why are we tabling it off? I mean, my understanding is people want to have a clearer picture on what's the best way forward, which would involve investigating whether, you know, there is a convergence path. And if in two months, people come back, say, well, there isn't, maybe that's totally a reasonable outcome. And then at least the TSC would have a clearer picture that's okay, we can approve this project on its own because there is no conflict or convergence possible. 
Yeah, no. That's kind of where I, the way I hear it. Dano? I mean, yeah, we need to have more time. I think we need to have a separate email list or a separate chat room to discuss these because there's there's a lot of parallel issues going on. And I think they're resolvable. I don't think they need to have perfect resolution. But I think, you know, hashing these out over two months will get people more comfortable saying, yes, this is a good project. Okay, so Tracy, thank you. Sorry, uh, I know you wanted to call the vote, but um, if there's issues that need to be resolved, we need to document those issues, right? We need to be very clear on what it is that we're uh, proposing. We need to say, these are the things that need to be handled before we would reconsider. And I, you know, I feel like we've had a lot of discussions, um, but I'm not sure that I know what we're what we're waiting on right and what's going to happen in the time that we're waiting um to, to make sure that if convergence is the piece that we're focused on is it a resolution of the fact that these things are two separate things um and they could you know both progress on their own i i just don't understand what we're waiting on so we really need to document um well what the, all okay. the issues are so that they can be resolved all right, thank you, Tracy. Uh, fair enough, but I think Dave at least tried to clarify. He, he wants to have time to see if there is a convergence path. That was his motion. Sophia, hi. Sophia? Yeah, I'm just getting off mute here in the room. I think uh, Dave's most recent statement was that sort of acknowledging that people are seeing these as different projects. And I think he just most recently said he's looking for a discussion around a complementary area, which I think gets to what Brian was saying. There's no reason we can't do that between you know, a project and a lab. So I, I really sort of sec second tra some of Tracy's sentiments. It's getting pretty confusing as to what the real issue is here. I will say it's beginning to look a little bit, you know, just putting out the elephant in the room here. Hyperledger often gets conflated with fabric and it feels like there's a fabric project that wants to put the brakes on another project to talk about something that is a different project and approach started in a different area it's multi protocol different philosophy to you know for one small area that Dave acknowledges could be complementary. And there's already, we'd welcome Dave as a maintainer, would welcome all the viewpoints. I think actually it's very positive. We've gotten a lot of outreach from Avalon, Europa, other projects who are really excited. So I'm not sure what, it, it would just seem like, you know, IBM Fabric team has, you know, something they pop up with, um, I guess, and a lot, some ad hominem statements against intention. So I'm glad Brian, um, you jumped in and, and in others who've made comments. So it's, I think just from an optics perspective, it, it just right. it's a little strange. I, okay, I appreciate your point of view, but I, I think that's honestly not really called for at this point. We have heard from many different people from different uh, organizations. Peter is next. Thank you. I just wanted to say a quick note. I put this in the TSC chat as well that if the TSC decides that it would be favorable to do some sort of exploration process for convergence, then I'm happy to volunteer some of my time from the side of Caxis to help facilitate that. We've been doing something similar already with the two new labs anyway. Uh, just wanted to put that down as an FYI. Okay, thank you. So I'll make the motion that we table this off for two months with the goal in two months to have a clearer picture as to whether a convergence is possible or not. And then we'll reassess whether the path forward is through convergence of some kind, or we should just, you know, have Firefly stand on its own because there is no convergence to talk about. I'll second that motion. All right, so can we have a... So I, second yeah. as well. I, I, I propose that this is a roll call vote. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Agree. I Angela? mean, Hob, do you have a comment on the motion? I second. No, no, wait. Uh, sorry, because... Uh, 
the, there was already the a second, Angelo. There was a second from uh, from Dave, and we have three minutes left. So hot. So quick comment before we vote on this: Can we get guarantees from all these stakeholders that there will be an effort at convergence? Yes. I mean, I... guys, we're going to be running out of time with no decision, which I think is the worst. Uh... That, that was my question. I'm done. Okay. I understand. Okay. That's a good point. But, you know, so... if there's no will to even investigate this, then I think it gives people who are concerned even more, you know, reason to be concerned. So, 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 so what is a, what is a no vote for, sorry, what is, what is a no vote, what is saying no to table it mean, mean that we don't? Well, we, we should don't make a decision. Agree. And since we're running out of time, the next thing would be to vote on whether we then approve it or not. But okay. it's going to be physically impossible in two minutes left. We, we which could. is why I'm getting agitated here because I'm trying to drive us to a decision. Well, let's vote. That, that vote could happen on the mailing list as well. Yeah, maybe we'll have to do that. So let's see if we have to table a lot of or not. At least we can get through this in one minute. So sure. let's go to the roll call quick. Okay, Angelo. I second. No, you have to say yes at this point. Second. Oh, sorry. Only... Yes, I Arno, always Arno. get confused. Yes. Okay, Arno. Yes. Arun. Abstain. Bow wow. Yes. Bobby. Yes. Dano. Yes. David. Yes. Gary. No. Grace. Yes. Hart. Abstain. Maria. Yes. Uh, Mark. No. Nathan. Abstain. Tracy. No. Troy. Abstain. Okay. All right. So. I don't have the exact count, but it seems like it is uh, the motion is passed. I need to go count, and we're out of time, so I will say hey, on, you can send the outcome. But there was there was seven between no and abstain, so however many else was left was probably yes. So I think I got eight yes. Oh. Fifteen people and three no's or something like this. There was, yeah. there was three no's and four abstains, I think. So Tune the motion in. passes. Tune in next time to find out the results. <laughs> <laughs> All right, people, I'm sorry. I'm sure some yeah, people were Donald. disappointed, but I hope this, you know, we can all work together to try to figure out a better way forward. So with that being said, you know, thank you all for joining with a full house today. So I take it that people have taken this seriously, which I appreciate. And um, We'll uh, be talking about, we'll talk about again uh, next week during the conference and otherwise in two weeks. Thank you all for joining. Goodbye. Thanks, Arnaud.